Please share and like this video and don't forget to subscribe this channel. Want to make an entrance at the country club? They will hear your new 2019 Chevrolet Corvette ZR1 convertible from about a mile away with its 6.2 liter supercharged V8. And then they will see it, the long hood with bulging intercooler and the crazy high wing on the back. Yes, not only is the King back for 2019, but the ZR1 is also being offered as a convertible for those who don't want a coupe with a removable hardtop. It is the first ZR1 drop top since the original 1970 model year. The coupe has a top speed of 212 miles per hour, and the convertible also exceeds 200 miles per hour. Preliminary testing by Chevy has the ZR1 doing 0-60 mph in less than 3.0 seconds, and the quarter mile is in the high 10 second range with the 8 speed automatic transmission. I got a ride in the 755 horsepower Chevrolet Corvette ZR1. Yup. A couple of hot laps around the big track and Willow Springs in the passenger seat with one of Chevy's factory hot shoes. Neener neener neener. Before I tell you what it was like, hint, not bad. Comma, let me address a few points the Corvette team would like you to know as well as a few concerns you all might have. First and foremost, is it gone at overheat? In case you're not up to speed, when pushed hard pre-2017 Corvette Z6's heat sold overheated. Chevy addressed this by redesigning the Z6's hood, fitting a different supercharger cover, and upgrading the cooling system. All of the changes are backward compatible, so current Z6's do not overheat and older ones can be fixed. Bensound.com Case closed. However, if the internet has taught us anything, it's that nothing is as fun nor as satisfying as crying over split milk. As for the ZR1, based on what not only Chief of Corvette Taj Jutster but also small block guru Jordan Lee told us, there's a better chance of polar ice cap staying in one piece than there is of the LT5 getting too hot. For one thing, they changed their internal certification. Long story short, the car must be able to do whatever the given certification tasks are at 100 degrees. The previous certification temperature was 87 degrees. Moreover, in addition to the primary radiator there are two auxiliary radiators for the main cooling system. There's an intercooler and two secondary intercoolers. See the big chipmunk cheeks below the ZR1 size? Each cheek holds two of the auxiliary coolers. There are also two intercoolers just for the supercharger. All in all, the ZR1 packs 12 heat exchangers, 13 of them if you get the 8-speed auto. A Bugatti Baron had 10. The supercharger itself spins more slowly than the one found on the Z06, around 16,000 revolutions per minute versus 21,000 revolutions per minute. That keeps things cool. However, the 2.65-liter supercharger, internally nicknamed Bass, see if you can figure out what that stands for, is over 50% larger than the one on this E06. Is the entire aftermarket clamoring to be first to slap on a smaller pulley, thereby increasing the supercharger speed and sending power over the moon? Oh yes, absolutely. Lee, however, says doing so will dup hurt the LT5's long-term reliability. The LT5 also marks the first application of dual fuel delivery on a GM product, both direct and port injection. Basically, if Lee and his team made the DI pump any larger, it would damage the cam load that powers it. Lee then admitted that one of the issues with the cam and block motor is that you only have so many cam loads. So to get enough fuel into the cylinders, there's a secondary port injection fuel rail. Problem solved. Another problem they ran into with the ZR1's LT5 power plant is that Lee and his team kept breaking dynamometers. No, really. I think they're still solving that last one. One of my big problems with the Z06 is that the rear end of the car cannot handle the 650 lbft of torque that the LT4 produces. I will never forget going down the corkscrew at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca passenger window first. We've complained about this fact over the years, but once you run out of tire in as E06, good luck. 
The ZR1 addresses this not only through chassis recalibration but also with aero. At top speed, should you opt for the $2,995 ZTK package, the front underwing and major league rear wing provide about 950 pounds of downforce, that's about 750 more pounds than this E06. Does that fix the problem? Well, from the passenger seat things seem pretty good. Alex, the Chevy engineer who gave me my laps, blasted out of the pits. Yeah, yeah, it's quick. But it feels ferocious. Torque plus traction equals go, go, go. Chevy's claiming 0-60 is less than 3 seconds and a quarter mile is in the high tens. I have no reason to doubt their claims. One more note. Chevy says the ZR1's top speed is 212 miles per hour. Interestingly, Corvette chose to go with a two-way average 210.20 miles per hour in one direction and 214.88 miles per hour in the other. Meaning 212.54 miles per hour. At 212.56, they could have called the 213 miles per hour. sound.com Ben sound.com Ben sound.com sound.com Ben sound.com Ben sound.com Bensound.com Bensound.com Bensound.com